A zoo director in Mexico has been fired after it was discovered that he killed and served four of the zoo's pygmy goats at a holiday banquet. Let me show you what a pygmy goat looks like. Oh, <laughs> okay, by the way, Ray, if you think that's bad, wait till I tell you my circumcision story. Oh. <laughs> okay, but keep going, keep going. <laughs> Okay, back to the big goats, little baby goats, four of them. Can we pull that picture up one more time? Four of them he killed and served as food. Would you kill this animal? Apparently, Jose Ruben Nava Noriega would. So, insider reported on the story. Uh, Noriega, who has been removed from his post as the director of Zuchilpan, a zoo in the city of Chilpancingo, put the male pygmy goat on the menu for a December banquet at the zoo. The state environment and natural resource department said in a video statement. <sighs> so yes, he fed this or these baby pygmy goats to other people who worked at the zoo or zoo benefactors. And if that wasn't enough, it gets worse um, because wildlife officials noted that this put the health of the banquet guests at risk because obviously zoo animals are not fit for human consumption. Um, and I really wish that that was the end of this, but it's really just the beginning because his goat feast wasn't the only thing that got him fired as the zoo director. So again, insider reported that a subsequent investigation into Nava Noriega found that apart from the ill advised meal he gave the staffers, he had also illegally traded a zebra and four Watusi cattle and with private individuals, the department added. So let's take a look at what the cattle look like. Damn. Just a beautiful Beautiful animal. This man was using his position as zoo director to trade these zoo animals. I'm assuming to private parties for money and that he was pocketing the money. He's literally just dealing these zoo animals like it's a damn pet store. I mean, how did this guy get this job? And it gets worse. But I'll save that for later. First, I want to get you guys in here on this. I mean, I look, how did he get hired here? Well, it happens. So I have a lot of <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of different takes on this story. So first off, um, I'm amused by this guy. I, mean, I know he did bad things, right? But he's like the Watusi uh, cattle, which looks super badass, uh, and the zebra he traded. He said, oh, "Well, I got three red deers out of it and and bubble gum or something." Uh, and they're, like, they're like the red deers are like a nickel. They're not that interesting. These other animals are much more. And they're like, wait a minute, wait, where are the red deers? And he's like, I don't know. <laughs> he didn't even get them. He's just making it up. Okay, I think you you know one of the things you're gonna tell us later is that he so so first I thought maybe he's just selling to random rich people, right? Uh, and they want a cattle, they want the the thing, whatever, right? Zebra in their backyard because it's kind of badass, right? And then when I found out he sold a jaguar. I was like, there's some chance he's selling to some cartels, okay? Because <laughs> uh, that's, come on, let's keep it real, right? So whatever he's doing, it ain't right, okay? And you can tell he's a really bad guy because it's not just, hey, listen, look, I hate to do it, but I'm gonna do it for the money. No, he's like, oh, look, those are the cutest animals we have at the zoo, let's eat them. <laughs> so like, just pure bad guy. Um, do you wanna hear the circumcision story now or later? Nah, let's hear Give Mondale it to us first. Now. No. <laughs> no, 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 no way. There's no way I'm going behind a circumcision story. Let's go. Let's <laughs> okay, so this is my mild defense of eating the goats, and it is an ironic defense. Okay, so, so when, uh, in Muslim culture, and uh, by the way, there is no such thing as just Muslim culture. There's different cultures in the wide variety of countries that uh, that Islam is uh, predominant and Indonesian culture is very different than Turkish culture. But at least in Turkish Muslim culture, uh, you get circumcised not at birth, but as kind of a, a rite of passage uh, when you get older. So for me, it was a six years old, okay? So there's a much longer story where there's like, a, we did it in a backyard with a doctor and everybody watching, okay? Uh, but hey, it's tradition, okay? 
And then they dress you up like a clown, etc. Um, suffice to say that I did not do that for my kids, okay? In some parts of culture are wonderful, other parts not so much. But anyway, they wanna make it up to you. They wanna say like, this is a wonderful thing, you know, hey, write a passage. And you got the hat on, and you got a robe and stuff. And and uh, and then, so they took my uh, me to my parents' hometown in southeastern Turkey. And uh, they introduced me to a little uh, sheep uh, and I named him Ali. And I'm like, oh, Ali, okay, all right, here we go. And they're like, this is in your honor. I'm like, okay, great. And they're like, oh, slice his throat. No, <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> okay. It turned, right in front of you? Yeah. Uh, After you named it. Yeah, and then they hung him up in the back uh, and we took a picture. Uh, and then we ate Ali for uh, dinner. Uh, and <laughs> I, okay. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I have literally never eaten chunks of lamb ever again. I didn't eat them that night, and I never ate it again. Oh, uh, so I eat other kinds of lamb, but not chunks of lamb. But look, guys, I tell that as the most ironic defense ever. Okay, because so I saw Ali, and I was six years old, and I named him or whatever, right? And so it was, it was obviously traumatic, and you could see here, right? Uh, but the reactions. But the fact is, we do eat lambs and we do eat goats. And in a sense, what's worse is that we don't see them, right? Out of sight, out of mind. So you see a cute little goat, you don't want to eat it. You see a cute little lamb, you don't want to eat it, right? But when you're not looking, they stuff them into factories and treat them in the most cruel ways imaginable, and then we eat them. So look, I'm not a vegan. Uh, and so uh, you can call me a hypocrite on it and, and well earned, okay? But at the same time, I admire vegans because even if you don't see it, that's exactly what's happening. I'm a vegetarian, so that evil's on you guys, it's not on me. Fair, <laughs> yeah. fair, hashtag fair. I'm too southern to be a vegetarian. Actually, if I was a vegetarian, I wouldn't be elected. So that's out the picture <laughs> for you. I will, I will say this, I, I all of a sudden, I feel so much closer to you, Jing. I want to offer my therapist's phone number for you off the air. So, you know, we can deal with this circumcision situation whenever you're ready, bro. <laughs> so, Some deep conversations about Ali and the trauma associated with Lucy. Jank, do you still hear Ali at night? <laughs> <laughs> you do not like the sleep dipper commercials, huh? <laughs> By the way, I'm I, I look, I don't know if this speaks well of me or poorly of me, but I'm not at all traumatized by it. Um, like, because honestly, like we eat those animals all the time and they cut it in a halal way, etc. Does that make it better? Not really, but at least they're trying and and it's and it's a celebration. And by the way, to give credit to Muslims, and this is really important, when they do a sacrifice like that, they give most of the meat to the poor, okay? And so they teach you. Hey, though we're celebrating your rite of passage, we're celebrating by giving most of the food to the poor. Someone who is not giving things away to the poor, I'm sure, was the now fired director of the zoo. In the case <laughs> of the further, <laughs> in the case of the further missing animals. Uh, and Jenk hinted that one of them is a jaguar, but there's some other animals that are missing. Let's get into this. Um, Insider again reported that uh, Juarez, the Secretary of Environment and Nat uh, Natural Resources in Guerrero, also said his department found that several animal births weren't recorded at the zoo and that it falsely logged the deaths of some specimen. At least 14 animals, including a coyote, a baby macaw, and a jaguar are still missing from the premises. And, you know, they didn't escape, let's be clear. This man was dealing exotic animals to private buyers. Like this, I'm sorry, that jaguar is not just roaming the streets of Mexico. It's in someone's house where it 100% should never be. And I really hate, like, there's this whole genre of TikTok where it's people who own big cats. So like lions and tigers, jaguars, you know, larger cat animals. And they'll just be chilling on their couch. Like, bro, that jaguar should not be on your couch. It shouldn't be in your house. It doesn't want to be there. <laughs> it doesn't want to be with the country that you're in at all. It should be in the wild. Or I mean, 
Now, I'm not a big fan of zoos, but at the very least, it should be in a zoo, although apparently not the zoo. Well, Raymana, then good news for you because, first of all, I, in one of our shows called Old School, uh, members can get it anytime. TYT.com slash join to become a member. You would have already heard that uh, uh, circumcision story earlier. Anyway, uh, I talked about a, a movie uh, by Quentin Tarantino coming out next Vegan Vengeance. Okay, I made that up. <laughs> but uh, so the guy ate the goats, uh, but that jaguar is probably going to eat some drug dealer. So. Vegan vengeance. Mm. <laughs> Vegan vengeance. <laughs> subtitle: Justice for Ali. <laughs> Justice for Ali. Yeah, like some kind of black quotation, some black black quotation letters at the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine a jaguar as a pimp, like just running around eating up all zoo directors? <laughs> well, whoever bought them, I'm t I'll tell you right now, they better be careful, because <laughs> jaguar ain't he's nothing a jaguar? to f with. <laughs> it's a jaguar. Yeah, this is listen. Here's here's, but what's what's truly at the root of the story is uh, human and how sick we are as humans, right? Like we will exploit any resource for 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 financial gain. The idea that this person who is charged with protecting these animals from one to wildlife, maybe for whatever reason, but also from other humans, and he's doing the worst of things with this. This is this is indicative of the the sickness of being human and our our idea that we own everything uh, at our fingertips. So it is absolutely a disgusting story. Yeah, absolutely. I do quickly though want you both to imagine you are that sick human, and you're going to <laughs> you're going to go to the zoo, and you're going to buy one of the animals from the zoo director. So cast aside your morals. What animal are you buying? Because I'm buying a capybara immediately. I might do it anyway. Is he still in business? I would love to have a pet capybara. <laughs> okay, uh, I need a I need a kangaroo. Oh, okay. <laughs> No, no, I, I, I'm, I'm buying Ali. I could at least save oh. one, save just one, and it'll be worth it. <laughs> no people at any banquets at the zoo are going to be eating Ali anytime soon. No way. I am curious. I wonder if he went into this job knowing he was going to be doing some messed up stuff. Like he was, it was a plan. He was like, I'm going to go to school, <laughs> you know, and, and, and I don't know. What do you major in? Zoology. I'm gonna get my degree so I can go and sell these animals for profit, and you know, keep a few to eat for myself. No way. Or like, if he was just working there, and then people reached out to him, they're like, "Hey, we kind of think these animals are cool, and you know, we're willing to slide you some cash under the table for them." No, that goes to Mondale's point. Uh, us humans, we're unpleasant creatures, um, and so when uh, when offered money or power, uh, we take it 98% of the time. Uh, so the minute somebody made the first offer, he's like, "I'm in business." Uh, <laughs> and then it—I mean, who would think? Oh, if I really want to make money, I'll go run a zoo, <laughs> and I'll sell the animals one by one illicitly, like the world's <laughs> worst plan for making it lots of money. But is it more likely he came to a zoo and he doesn't doesn't care? I mean, he looks at the animals as food more than anything else, and he's like, "Oh, somebody's willing to offer money." I was just about to eat him. Yeah, sure, come on, let's do it. And so power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. And that's the nature of humans. <sighs> Wish it wasn't yeah. so. Yeah, yeah, unfortunately it is. I also heard that uh, this zoo, this zoo, this director of the zoo was related to George Sen. No, I just made that up. I didn't oh, you mean <laughs> Anthony Duvolder? Anthony <laughs> Duvolder, yeah. It's actually, he's actually the director. <laughs> Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.